one. VTR nine twelve sixty six. Air nine nineteen sixty six. Take one. My name is Victoria Winters. The great house on Widow's Hill stands as a dread reminder of a past that will not die. It casts its shadows far into the night, reaching out to another house, a cottage, into which the past has suddenly and unexpectedly intruded. What do you want here, Burke? We were just about to sit down and have dinner. That's just what your daughter said. And I asked if you had room for one more. Do you? Well... The answer is no? I'd love to have you stay, Burke, but... Well, this is sort of a special occasion. It's, it's Vicky's first time in our house, and... Well, I just hadn't planned... You know what I mean. You mean I'm not welcome, is that it? Oh, Burke, you, you... You can't just walk into somebody's house and invite yourself to dinner. Well... Times sure have changed since the good old days. Would you believe it, Vicky? There was a time when I could walk in here any time of the day or night, and they'd practically force me to sit down at the dinner table. Maggie, you remember the time? When Sam sent you to look for me because I hadn't been around for a week? It isn't that you're not welcome, Burke. Burke, did you uh, ever think that uh, Maggie may not have prepared enough food for four people? I'd be happy with a sandwich, as long as I could be with friends. Unless it's you, Vicky, unless you don't want me here. No, I have no objection. Well, what do you say, Maggie? A sandwich for a lonely man? But don't look at your father. You tell me. Well, for Pete's sake, of course you can stay for dinner. Great. I'll go see how it's doing. How about a drink, Sam? What do you say? Sure. Vicky, I completely forgot you were going to be here tonight. Would it have made any difference if you'd remembered? No, nothing would make any difference tonight. What would you like, Miss Winters? I won't have anything, thank you. What's so special about tonight? Here you are, Burke. Thanks. Well, tonight just might be the first step toward Judgment Day. Shall we drink to that, Sam? I would, if I knew what you were talking about. Well, uh, why don't I explain it to you? Well, Vicky goes and helps Maggie with my sandwich. You don't mind, do you? Nope. We can eat any time you're ready. Hey, what is this? I don't like it when everybody stops talking when I enter a room. Makes me wonder what they were talking about. Bill Malloy's death. That's what we were talking about. Oh. Well, look, I have a nice dinner cooked. Why don't we just sit down and talk about something else? Why don't we talk about my manslaughter trial? Burke, please! Why not? I don't mind. After all, it was 10 years ago. Vicki, did you know that I was once tried for manslaughter? Yes. We were talking about it tonight. Oh, you were. Well, isn't that a coincidence? So you were talking about my manslaughter trial? I'd heard about it. I asked Mr. Evans what had happened. I see. And what did happen, Sam? Burke, this is nonsense. <laughs> Did he tell you that we were at a tavern? Uh, Roger Collins, his girlfriend, uh, who later became his wife and myself. Yes. What else did he tell you? Brooke, I don't see any point in this. Did he tell you that we were all drunk, all three of us? And that we piled into my car with me behind the wheel? Yes. Well, go on. Well, go on, Vicky. I'm really curious. He said that you were very drunk, that when you were driving back to town, you hit a man. The car hit a man. Yes. And you kept on driving, and the man was killed. And the police traced the car to me. And I was put on trial. 
and Roger Collins and his intended bride testified that I was driving the car. Isn't that how it happened, Sam? Yes, that's what happened, Burke. Oh, that's what Roger Collins said happened. And the jury agreed. Yes. Vicki, did, did he bother to tell you my side of the story? No. Well, and as long as we're bringing Vicki up to date, why don't we tell her the part the jury didn't believe? It's a funny thing, Vicki, how everything becomes a symbol in your life. When I was sitting in the witness stand, looking out at the courtroom, I was looking directly at Roger Collins and his intended bride. He married her just a week after I was convicted. Well, I was looking out at them, but I didn't see them at all. All I saw was Collinwood and the people who lived in it, the family who founded this town, the family who owned the cannery and the fishing fleet, the family that put money into the pockets of more than half the people in this town. Suddenly, I felt like an ant trying to crush an elephant. You know that feeling, Sam? I saw Roger Collins, a respected member of that respected family, lying about me on the witness stand. And I knew right then who they'd believe. Are you sure he lied? I wasn't driving that car at the time of the accident. I was driving when we left the tavern, and I was pretty drunk. Roger made me pull over, and from then on, he drove the car. You mean he was driving when the man was killed? I was drunk, and I don't remember too much about that night. But I do remember Roger Collins taking over the wheel. Before the accident. I thought so then, and I still do. Only what I thought doesn't seem to matter. But you're not sure. You don't really know. Vicki, I didn't kill that man. But I couldn't prove it. So I went to prison for five years. Five years, Sam. That's a long time. You start to think. You begin to wonder who you love and who you hate. Who are your friends? And who are your enemies? Well, this, is, uh, this is just about empty. I'll, I'll go get another one from the kitchen. Well, that's my story, Vicki. It's just so hard to believe that Mr. Collins would lie. Why not? It was his neck or mine. You could be wrong. You said you don't really remember. Yes, I could be wrong. But I'm not. Well, now I hope I haven't ruined your dinner party with all this ancient history. I'll see about getting dinner on the table. Oh, and would you tell Sam to come out for a minute? I miss his company. Well, Vicki, do you believe my story? I don't know what I believe. Well, that's the beginning, anyway. He's gone. What? My pop, he's not in the kitchen. He must have gone out the back way. What is it, Burke? I've got to know what's happening. He's running. From what? From himself. From Sam Evans. Hello, Mr. Wells. <clears throat> Why, Sam, how are you this evening? <clears throat> what brings you to our hotel? Oh, uh, <clears throat> just a, uh, a minor errand. My uh, daughter wanted me to pick up something that uh, she gave you to put in the hotel safe. <clears throat> What'd she do, uh, leave her paycheck with the day clerk? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wish she did. Otherwise, I'd, I'd go out and uh, buy myself a brand new convertible car. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it's nothing important. It's uh, just a letter. Uh, would you get it for me, please? Sure thing. <clears throat> Terrible news, wasn't it, about Bill Malloy drowning? 
See it. Yeah. I can't understand how a man like that could just plain fall in the water. Hmm. Man who'd been around boats all his life. Well, it can happen. Here she comes. Now, let's see. Uh, it was uh, an envelope about, uh, oh, this big. Yeah, I remember it. It had Maggie's name on it. Yeah, I remember it. She asked me to put it in here just a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. Here she is. Ah, uh, thanks. Oh, oh, oh. No, not so fast. I have to call Maggie first. Is she home? What do you mean you have to call Maggie? The house rules. Nobody can get anything out of that safe except the person that put it in there. But, but that's my letter. I wrote it. Maybe you did, Sam, but you wrote it to Maggie, and that makes it hers. Ask the mailman if you don't believe me. Oh, the devil with the mailman. I want that letter. And you can have it, too, as soon as I talk to Maggie. Is she home? No. You know where she is? No. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait. Oh, but please, it's important. Well, it must be. She asked me very clearly not to give this to anyone. Well, Mr. Wells, I need that letter. And I need this job, Sam. I'd lose it if I broke the house rules. Sorry. You're sure he's not there? Well, if he comes in, will you call me? Thanks. He didn't go to the Blue Whale. Burke, why would he run? Because he's afraid of me. I think you've known that for a long time. Well, he's running, but he won't get far. Vicky? No. What? Well, I was going to say I'm sorry that you're here. But I think it's better that you know what you're living with. Burke, my father was always your friend. I don't care what he was. I'm interested in what he is. You ask me why I came here today. Because of Bill Malloy, because of his death. Because I think your father had something to do with it. But Mr. Malloy drowned. What possible connection could there be with Mr. Evans? Yes, he drowned, but why? Did he fall in the water or did somebody push him? My pop had nothing to do with it. Nothing. He ran, Maggie. He ran because he knew I was going to talk to him about Bill Malloy. I don't believe it. My pop and Bill Malloy were good friends. Did Malloy ever talk to you about your father? Why do you want to know? Did he? Well, sure, lots of times. I mean, shortly before he died. Did he talk to you about your father and me and Collins and my manslaughter trial? No. I don't believe you. Burke, leave her alone. Why, because you think I'm being ungentlemanly? I think you're being a bully. Look, a man tried to help me. He was a good man, and he tried to help me. And he was killed. Are you sure about that, or are you just guessing? Yes, I'm sure. Vicki, the night Malloy died, were you up at Collinwood? Yes. Did you see Roger Collins? Yes, and I saw Mr. Malloy, too. He came to Collinwood? He came to see Mr. Collins. Vicki, look. A man is dead. A man who never harmed a living soul. So if there's anything you can tell me, anything at all. All I know is that Mr. Malloy came to the house around 10 o'clock. He was very angry and so was Mr. Collins. He said something about you and a meeting. Did you uh, hear what the meeting was about? No, but Mr. Collins was very upset. I'll bet he was. Did you hear anything else? No, they went into the drawing room and shut the door. Did your father ever talk to you about a meeting? No. Did he ever talk to you about me and Roger Collins? Burke, I wish you'd leave. Maggie, the night Malloy died, he set up a meeting in Roger Collins' office. He invited three people, me, Collins, and your father. He said he could clear me of that manslaughter charge. And your father never mentioned it to you? No. Well, it's true. At 11 o'clock, and we were all there, me, Collins, and Evans. The only person who didn't show up was Bill Malloy. He couldn't, because he was lying face down in the water somewhere. Then that's why he was at Collinwood. Yeah, to invite the star performer, the man who had me convicted for some crime he committed. Then why would he ask Mr. Evans? I have a hunch Maggie would know that. But I don't. 
Burke, what could my father possibly know about your trial? He obviously knew something, or Malloy wouldn't have invited him to the meeting. I don't believe it. It's true, Maggie. I don't know how or why, but it's true. I don't believe it. If Pop knew that you were innocent, he would have walked into the courtroom and said so. You know my father, Burke. You know what kind of a man he is. Okay, Maggie. We'll wait and see what kind of a man Sam is. Well, I guess that's the end of our dinner party. I'll go turn the stove off. Maggie, I'm sorry. Oh, Vicki, don't be sorry for me. Be sorry for that psychopathic liar. Oh, it can't be true. None of it. I'm sure it isn't. Those are just words, Vicki. But thank you for them. But words won't help my father for express that story around town. Oh, Vicki, you never really knew my father. But he was the sweetest, kindest man. He'd never hurt anybody. I don't see how Burke could possibly think that your father had anything to do with it. He couldn't. That's what gets me. Oh, Vicki, you heard the story. There were three people in that car. Burke, Roger Collins, and Collins' wife. My father was nowhere around. It's just that... What? Well, ever since Burke came back to town, Pop has been worried. And it does have something to do with Roger Collins. But it can't be about Burke's accident. My father wasn't even near it. Well, maybe Mr. Malloy was mistaken. What kind of a mistake? Well, if Burke was telling the truth, and Mr. Malloy called that meeting to clear up the charges, perhaps he had somehow got an idea that your father was involved, and, and he just jumped to a wrong conclusion. Vicki, that's it. Of course that's what's happening. Vicki, you're a genius. Why didn't I think of that myself? I mean, let's face it. Burke and Pop were always good friends in those years. But you heard how he talked tonight. I mean, he'd drop in here for dinner two or three times a week. And if he didn't show up for a while, Pop would ask me to call him to find out if he was sick. I mean, Pop would never... He'd never do it. Maggie, I'm sure there's an answer. Is it, Vicky? Tell me, why did my dad run tonight? Well, any messages for me? No, not a one. You expecting something? Well, the way things are going around here, I don't know what to expect. Could I have my key, please? Oh, yeah, sure. I was just telling, telling someone tonight how hard it is to believe that Bill Malloy could just plain fall in the water. I mean, a, a fellow who's been around the water all his life. You know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. Thank you. Of course, like Sam Evans says, it can happen. I suppose anything in the world can happen. Sam Evans. Was he here tonight? Yeah. He was very fond of Bill, you know. At what time was he here? Oh. About an hour ago. Tried to pull a fast one on me, too. Uh, what do you mean? Well, his daughter Maggie left a letter here in the safe. He tried to talk me into giving it to him. He was real anxious to get it, too. Probably full of some incriminating evidence. <laughs> Did he get the letter? House rules, Burke. Them that puts in, gets out. Nobody else. I told him he'd have to get an okay from Maggie. Mm. Well, if he comes by again, or if you hear from him, uh, you'll let me know, will you? Oh, sure enough. Hello, Burke. Where'd you go, Sam? Nowhere. I, I've been sitting in here waiting for you. Oh? Well, you said you wanted to have a private talk, so uh, let's go up to your room and have it. Okay.
Stay tuned for Where the Action Is next here on ABC. Shadows is a Dan Curtis production. Dark Shadows, number 62, BTR 91366, air 92066, take one.